Good morning. I wanted to just come back at you guys with one more St. Patrick's Day card. This one's actually a little bit unique in that we're going to use this cutout that we had from before. And also, um, we're because I really like reusing stuff you already have. And what I'm thinking is doing a sort of get well. Basically, I'm doing a get well card, but I'm going to more or less St. Patrick's Day theme it because of the time of year. So I like the idea of doing a bunch of different greens. So I have sort of this base card and then this guy. And I think I'll do a sentiment in sort of a sage green, which is hard to see, but you'll manage. And then I think I'll uh, basically do a background of the clovers in this shimmer eucalyptus, which looked really awesome the last time I used it. So we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. The first thing I want to do is move most of this to the side. And then I want to cut about a quarter inch off this card, which is currently about four and a quarter. I want to get it to, basically I wanted to get it to four by five and a quarter, which is sort of the panel size we've been working with recently. So we cut a quarter inch off here. Now you need to kind of decide, like, where we want to actually put our sentiment. I like the idea of, uh, I'm planning to reuse also this uh, beer head slash cloud we had earlier. So I like the idea of putting, like, a small sentiment kind of here. So I'm going to go and take the top down to five and a quarter. But that's not going to give us much space at the top, basically. And there we have our two strips. Always save your strips. You never know when you might need them for a border or to do a card or whatever. So that gives us a nice sort of matting so we get to see these, like the apple green. The next thing I want to do is figure out exactly how much of a background I'm going to need to paint or you know, to, uh, for the eucalyptus. So I'm not going to need to... I want to cut a little off the sides and then, I don't know, maybe about an inch off the top and see how that looks. Because essentially, since we're putting this behind, we just want it to get sandwiched and not really be, yeah, so that'll work fine. And we just need, need to take a little bit off the side. We can actually take about half an inch off the side because we aren't going to need a ton. And then, yeah, there we go. So this and then this guy behind it and... I think we are good with cutting things for today. Again, saving these for later. And next I want to take this and basically paint it with the Shimmer Eucalyptus paste because even though this won't take much time to dry, um, we do have to wait for it to dry before we can assemble the rest of it, and uh, we can let it dry while we're working on the sentiment. Anyway, I used this recently, so I don't really even have to mix it up. You can see all the shimmery bits already. And I'm just using a foam brush, because I think they're great for sort of applications where... Or maybe not. That did not work at all. Okay. Plan B, we'll just use a squeegee on this and lay some down. Yeah, that works a lot better. Um, and really, we don't have to be, like, super precise. The reason this isn't sticking very well is that this is a coated paper. So what we're having to basically do is just leave a thin layer, but, um, you know, it won't act... If we scrape this off, it would all scrape off. So this is going to be more of a modeled look, although, you know, like, I think that will work perfectly fine as well. And 
and you can also just obviously the other option here is you can just go in with your fingers too I'm just wanting to make sure we have some pretty good coverage and then this should dry pretty quickly while we're working on the other stuff setting this down for a second and let's grab our other piece and see how this would look I think that will look perfectly serviceable so I am going to and you can already see it kind of shimmering I'm just going to try and break up a little bit of there's some horizontal lines here that I would I kind of want to break up a little bit anyway just looks relatively random so I am going to let that dry on the side and see if I have any left here and I'm gonna go clean up my stuff I will be back in one second squeegees back where they go uh, as you can see in the short time while I was working on that you can see that the coating that wasn't very receptive before is already sort of soaked through so this is in the process of drying so we can just let that go for a while I want to play with another tool I haven't used yet which is a stamp positioner and I'm trying to think what I want is my get well sentiment I like that you got this. Uh, I also like Ride the Wave. I'm trying to think. Do I want... I think you got this works better because I'll probably put it in this corner. So something that's a little more square, I think, would work a little bit better. Obviously, you can do... Whatever you prefer. And, I mean, I think one of the things that's interesting is you can really change up cards by changing up the sentiments. Like, you could make this a St. Patrick's Day card or almost anything other card. And we got our You Got This, which is hard to read with no ink on it. I'm going to see if this piece we... Yeah, that should work. So I am going to put this in the bottom corner. Essentially the way the thi this thing works is you stick a magnet on the paper to hold it down. And then what you do is you basically position this where you want it on the paper, which is just in that lower corner. And then you close this and if it is the right height, this one is not. So we will Try this again slightly. Basically, the the top will grab grab on. So, depending on how thick the stamps are and how thick your paper is, and a few other things, you may or may not need this guy, which is basically just foam. There's also paper that can go on top of the foam, um, so you can get your more precisely. Uh, line things up. Let's try that again. So that's about where we want this because then really all we're going to have to do is just cut it on the other side and this guy got picked up. The paper also got moved around so I'm just going to reposition it in the corner and just put more of the magnet on the paper so now yeah there we go. It'll stick a little bit but not too much. 
And this is new. Often what people will suggest is just touching one of these clear stamps a little bit to sort of help with its ink adhesion when it's brand new. After a while, it won't matter. And I'm using sage because we're kind of keeping with our green theme, which you can see here. And we will stamp this once. And well, that looks perfect, so I don't think we need to stamp it again. Um, so let's just take a look at this with our color palette. We've got the sage, we've got the the Kelly green, and then we've got the paste, which is quickly drying and uh, getting very shimmery. Whilst that guy dries, now we can kind of go into final assembly with this guy. Uh, first time trying stamp positioning tools, and I must say I am a big fan. It worked just as one would expect it to, so that is always a plus in my book. And when I was reorganizing... I moved my glue around, so I think we'll do most of this with a tape roller because I got it right here. So, this is probably dry enough to work with. So, I'm probably going to put the panel like that. Let me see if I can dig up where my glue went off to. I thought of doing a rearrangement. Like you always put something somewhere and then you can't remember where you put it. Oh, that was something else I was looking for. Oh, I know. I put it on the side. I actually put it on the side of my roller cart for ease of finding later, which then I forgot about. But I'm really liking this utility cart as just a way to hang on to stuff. This is, again, just the Mono Aqua that I am a big fan of. So, again, we don't need a ton. This stuff is pretty sticky. Uh, I'm just sort of outlining... There are some little pieces here that will be a little interesting to see how they work out. Anyway, so I just have a good layer down. This does actually have a, like, bigger side, too, if you so choose, but I almost always use the detail tip just because I like the control on it. Then this, this is sort of the top, if you will. So, I mean, this is going to... Uh, hold down better, I think, if we do it this way. And then it's a little wet still. But I like how this comes out is sort of looking pretty abstract. Let me just grab a paper towel quick. A little cleaner as I got a little paste on here. All nice and cleaned up. So I think we can just. might take a minute because of the amount of paint we, paste we used. So I am going to have this be a little concave and let this just sort of sit to the side. Let the glue dry whilst we are getting this guy cut out. And I think all we will need really to do here is sort of border this 
yeah, something like that looks nice. Now you could take this up a little bit to sort of even off this border and that border if you want. Uh, let me see how this looks on the card and I'll sort of make a decision about that. Uh, I think this works as it is. So what I am going to do, now I could just glue that down or tape it down directly. And I don't think, I don't know, I was thinking of using, oh, you can't see that. I was thinking of using this cloud somewhere as like sort of a base of the this tree. But I don't know, I, I think it looks better without and then just a simple sentiment on the bottom here. So I will save this once again to put some scraps back and we will just grab a little, whoop, grab a little foam block. Put all our scraps back in the scrap area for next time. I've done some bubble wrap. So this is sticky on this side. So I'm just going to sort of position this a little off to the side here. Cut this guy off. There we go. So that should mount just fine. Grab these guys off and put them back on the back end. And again, saving for next time. Peel the backing off of this guy, and then it's pretty straightforward to just stick this down. Uh -huh. got, some, got some spare paste on myself, but uh, then all we really need to do is mount this guy to a card front. So using my heavy duty tape roller because it is one of my favorite things because it's just so efficient at getting in all the tape down in one shot. And I'm going to just sort of get this guy lined up. That's where we are all down. And I put this a little off to the side, but unfortunately with this tape stuff, you're, once it's down, it's kind of down. So, I like how it came out. I think it is a great use of things that we had already. And then the uh, nice thing about these cards is they're white on the inside, so they are easy to write on. So, that is a fun use of products you already had and uh, we got to get the wild card out of it so that's all i got for you guys today thanks for watching